The entire construction process of the Valley of the Kings has fascinating details that shows how advanced ancient Egyptians really were. But materials they have used and designs they have made is mind-boggling that shows how they were far advanced than we ever thought. So, the Valley of the Kings, situated on the west bank of the Nile River near Luxor, Egypt, stands as a testament to ancient Egypt's architectural prowess and burial practices. This UNESCO World Heritage Site is renowned for its impressive tombs that house pharaohs and other high-ranking officials of the New Kingdom. The construction of the Valley of the Kings involved a meticulous process that combined advanced engineering, skilled craftsmanship, and deep religious significance. Despite the passage of millennia, the mysteries surrounding its construction continue to captivate and awe modern-day visitors and researchers. First, let's look at the construction stages. The construction of the Valley of the Kings involves several stages, each carefully planned to ensure the safe burial of the pharaohs and preserve their eternal journey to the afterlife. First, the site for the Valley of the Kings was chosen for its strategic location and geological characteristics. It was situated on the west bank of the Nile, symbolizing the realm of the setting sun and the land of the dead. The natural rock formations in the area provided an ideal foundation for the tomb structures. The layout of the tombs was meticulously planned to ensure that each pharaoh's burial place was unique and suitably connected to the burial chamber and associated passageways. The second stage involved clearing the designated area of debris and leveling the ground to prepare for excavation. The ancient Egyptians relied on skilled laborers to extract the limestone bedrock, which formed the foundation for most of the tomb structures. To access the rock, laborers used basic tools like chisels and hammers made from copper and stone. The third stage involved the construction of the tomb by carving the burial chambers and passages into the natural limestone bedrock. The ancient builders showcased their architectural finesse by designing intricate corridors and chambers while ensuring structural stability. Passageways were carefully angled to deter tomb robbers and to maintain the secrecy of the tombs. The construction of the Valley of the Kings required a strategic selection of materials that would not only withstand the test of time, but also convey the grandeur and significance of the royal necropolis. The ancient Egyptians chose materials based on their durability and availability. Firstly, limestone was the primary material used in the construction of the Valley of the Kings. This sedimentary rock was abundantly available in the region and provided a sturdy foundation for the tomb structures. The ancient Egyptians prized limestone for its workability allowing artisans to carve intricate hieroglyphic inscriptions, colorful murals, and decorative motifs into the tomb walls. The limestone was also used for the exterior facades of the tombs, giving them a uniform appearance. Also, granite was another essential material used in the Valley of the Kings, particularly for the construction of the sarcophagi and burial chambers. Granite, a hard and durable igneous rock, was sourced from quarries located further away from the valley. Its use in the burial chambers highlighted the pharaoh's importance, as granite was considered a prestigious material reserved for the elite. The solid nature of granite helped protect the mummified remains and treasures housed within the burial chamber. With that, alabaster, a translucent and decorative stone, was highly favored for its aesthetic appeal and religious symbolism. The ancient Egyptians used alabaster to create exquisite funerary furniture, canopic jars, and statues placed inside the tombs. The soft, glowing appearance of alabaster added an ethereal quality to the burial chambers and emphasized the spiritual nature of the afterlife. And while not as prevalent as limestone, sandstone was occasionally used in the construction of the Valley of the Kings. Sandstone was employed for specific architectural features, such as the lintels and door frames of the tomb entrances. The ancient Egyptians often carved decorative motifs and inscriptions onto these sandstone elements enhancing the tomb's overall appearance. Moreover, designing the Valley of the Kings was a complex and carefully orchestrated process that reflected the ancient Egyptians' deep religious beliefs, cultural norms, and architectural ingenuity. The site's design aimed to create a monumental necropolis that honored the pharaohs and high-ranking officials of the New Kingdom, ensuring their safe passage to the afterlife. Several key aspects contributed to the unique and intricate designing of the Valley of the Kings, First, the site selection, which was of paramount importance. Choosing the West Bank for the Royal Necropolis was a deliberate decision, connecting the burial grounds with the journey of the deceased pharaoh's soul to the afterlife. 
The layout of the Valley of the Kings was carefully designed to accommodate the tombs of the pharaohs and high-ranking officials, while maintaining an organized and hierarchical arrangement. The positioning of the tombs took into account the status and importance of the deceased, with the most significant pharaoh's tombs situated closer to the entrance of the valley. The architectural design within the tombs was equally elaborate. Each tomb comprised of several interconnected passageways, corridors, and chambers leading to the burial chamber. The intricate design served both practical and spiritual purposes, deterring tomb raiders and providing a suitable environment for the pharaoh's journey to the afterlife. Also, the walls of the tombs were adorned with elaborate hieroglyphic inscriptions and intricate decorations. These inscriptions contained spells and texts from the Book of the Dead, intended to guide and protect the pharaoh's soul in the afterlife. Additionally, the decorations included colorful murals depicting religious rituals, mythological scenes, and offerings to the gods. These vivid representations provided a glimpse into the ancient Egyptian beliefs and practices surrounding death and the afterlife. With that, as part of the designing process, the ancient Egyptians also prepared elaborate funerary furniture and treasures to accompany the pharaohs in the afterlife. Intricately carved canopic jars containing the pharaoh's organs were placed in the burial chamber. Sarcophagi, made from granite, were beautifully crafted to house the pharaoh's mummified remains. And construction of the Valley of the Kings is very similar to the construction of the city of Luxor, which is located in modern-day Egypt and was not built as a single entity, but rather evolved over thousands of years. In ancient times, Luxor was known as Thebes and served as the capital of ancient Egypt during the New Kingdom period, approximately 1550 to 1077 BCE. The city was strategically located on the east bank of the Nile River, which made it a vital religious, political, and cultural center. It was the home of the pharaohs and a prominent site for the worship of the god Amun. The construction of Luxor's most iconic structures, the Karnak and Luxor temples, began in the reign of Amenhotep III, around 1390 to 1352 BCE, and were expanded upon by subsequent pharaohs. These temples were dedicated to the god Amun and were built with impressive stone architecture and grand colonnades. The west bank of Luxor, known as the Valley of the Kings, became the royal burial ground during the New Kingdom. Pharaohs and powerful nobles were buried in elaborately decorated tombs cut into the rock. The most famous tomb in the Valley of the Kings is that of Tutankhamun, which was discovered almost intact by Howard Carter in 1922. Over the centuries, Luxor continued to be an important city, but its prominence waned as Egypt's capital shifted to different locations. Various civilizations and rulers contributed to the city's development and left their marks in the form of temples, monuments, and structures. The modern city of Luxor has been built around these ancient sites and continues to be an essential center for tourism and Egyptology. The preservation and restoration of its ancient monuments are vital not only for the city's cultural heritage, but also for its tourism industry, which attracts millions of visitors each year. And Graham Hancock has proposed a number of controversial theories about the Valley of the Kings, including the idea that it was built by a lost civilization that possessed advanced technology. He has also suggested that the Valley of the Kings may be connected to other ancient sites around the world, such as the Pyramids of Giza and the Nazca Lines. Hancock's theories about the Valley of the Kings have been met with mixed reactions from the archaeological community. Some scholars have dismissed his ideas as being implausible, while others have acknowledged that they are worth considering. In 2016, Hancock published a book called Fingerprints of the Gods, which explores his theories about the Valley of the Kings and other ancient sites. The book has been a commercial success, and it has helped to raise awareness of Hancock's work. Here are some of the specific claims that Hancock has made about the Valley of the Kings. The tombs in the Valley of the Kings were built by a lost civilization that possessed advanced technology. The Valley of the Kings is connected to other ancient sites around the world, such as the Pyramids of Giza and the Nazca Lines. The location of the Valley of the Kings was chosen for its alignment with astronomical phenomena. The tombs in the Valley of the Kings contain hidden chambers that have not yet been discovered. Hancock's claims about the Valley of the Kings have not been definitively proven or disproven. However, they have generated a great deal of interest and debate. Only time will tell whether Hancock's theories would be ultimately vindicated. That's it for today. Subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell.